it's just like you said it'd be. Who? The professor? Uh, yeah, sure. Always used to say we'd have a place all our own one day. Okay, so... The, you know, since season one ended, you know, I don't know how much you keep up with social media, but have you like kind of peeked online to kind of just see how people be reacting to this first season of of this beloved franchise coming back? Yes, and in fact, the the beauty of doing X Men '97 is that we actually get to hear and see the fan reaction on social media, which we did we were not able to do back in the '90s. Which is why I, I oftentimes say we, we really didn't know until about five years ago how popular the original series was until we started being invited to some Comic Cons and meeting fans who grew up on the, the show who told us, you know, that, that it made their childhood. And we were just overwhelmed by the love and the warmth from the fans. And so now to be able to see it and also to interact with fans both online and also at Comic Cons is just such a gift. Well, I know that you know, even with the original show, you know, the show had you know a, a lot of mature, a lot of you know, kind of very dark mom moments. But this season, with ninety seven, this was an emo an incredibly emotionally charged season, especially for Rogue. For you coming, you know, coming back as an actor for the, for this character, you know, I, I like did you. Were you prepared or had, had he told you kind of like in advance, like, you know, get ready because Rogue is going to really go through it? Or like, were you taking it at script by script? Um, I just took it script by script. Um, yeah, I mean, I think we talked about some of the ideas for the first season every now and then. But really, just like in the old days, in the 90s, we never really knew what was going to happen until we got the scripts. And so it was it was just so exciting to be able to get like season five and then seven and realize ahead of time that this was a place where I could really put all of my emotion and passion uh, and my skills for acting into that piece. Um, not to mention I had been suffering from um, depression and I was grieving because my young 17 year old niece had just passed away about eight months beforehand and from cancer and I was deeply deeply grieving so I, w I figured that I could use my grief and put it into my voice so that it would be authentic when Rogue loses her the love of her life and that I hoped that people would feel that and it would resonate with them and that hopefully, since many people have lost dear ones because of the COVID pandemic, wars, displacement, that hopefully they would also feel it and it might help them cry and release their own grief and uh, hopefully get some healing. Well, I, I did. I I didn't notice. I my condolences first of all, and I because I I always felt you know when I was watching that episode for the first time, I felt like. You know, because I wasn't sure the issue. You know, like you know, if you're letting you know, out your emotions about the story that you're that you're, that you're reacting to, but like now to know that there's two sides to it, that's you know that uh, definitely changes my perspective a lot as a viewer. And right. I, uh, you know, you you know, you return to this, you know, you return to this iconic hero that you become. You know, you become so close that everyone now know you as around the world. But was there right. something that you when you when you met with the creative team talked about like what you was there something that you were hoping to bring to Rogue this time around all, after all these years that you were like, I didn't get to do this during the first five seasons, but I want to make sure I can get, I can do it now, whether it is for the writing to acknowledge that or for your performers to include that. You know, no, I didn't, I didn't talk about that with the creative team because when X-Men 97 begins, it's really a very short time after graduation day, after the end of the first animated series. So Rogue hasn't really had much character development in that time. The only thing that's really happened is, you know, Professor X is gone and now Cyclops is basically leading the team, but they're trying to figure out, well, there's power struggles going on. And so um, 
No, I I just knew that I needed to pick her up where we left her so that there would be no gap. And I focused on that for the first few episodes. And then, as I said, when I got the script for for episode five and then episode seven, it was just um, a, a gift, a real gift for an actor. I feel like I mean maybe this is how this is how I interpret it, but I feel like this season was really the the end of innocence for a lot of the characters, including Rogue. And you know we start to see her really going down this dark path now of you know that we're you know that we're not really used to seeing. Would you say that there is there's no point there's no point of return anymore at this point? Or do you still think that she can come back to you know the kind of lightheartedness, bubbliness that we've all come to know for all these years? Well, you know. When somebody is grieving, you go through a major um, emotional roller coaster, and you do get to be you. You feel anger. You feel sometimes revenge, and we see that in Rogue. Like in the beginning, she's broken. Then she starts to just turn her energy into her anger and let her anger out and become the the avenging destroyer, you know, like Kali, the the goddess of death and reincarnation, who who dances on the bones of the dead. I mean, she she really goes on that journey, which is what a lot of people go through when they when they've lost somebody that they really care about. I, at one point in my own grief, I said, will I ever be happy again? Can I ever feel joy again? And, you know, my sister who lost her her only daughter, she's still going through it. And I, I it's very difficult. But I have come out the other side and I am now honoring her memory. And I feel glad that I can put it into my work, channel my own blues, channel the blues into my work. And uh, <clears throat> and that is actually very therapeutic. It's cathartic. No, I, no, I got absolutely. I, you know, I, you know, I think Rogue will too. Sorry. So to, oh, just to finish that thought. So, yeah, I, I mean, I think Rogue will as well. She it's a journey that she has to go on and we just have to keep watching to see where it takes her. Well, speaking of that, because, you know, the finale ended on, I mean, what, a, you know, what a cliffhanger. You know, I mean, not all of us, we're just, we're just waiting for that season two premiere date. So, <laughs> but but what my, my my only only thought that went through that finale, when we see at the very end, you know, in the present timeline, when, you know, Apocalypse picks up the car and I'm thinking, can Rogue survive Gambit coming back, but as a rival, like how detrimental would that be to her? If let's theoretically, theoretically, if that were to happen, how would she deal with it as a gambit, but as a as an opponent this time? Well, I guess you're just gonna have to watch and find out if that happens, <laughs> won't you? <laughs> Nice try, my friend. <laughs> uh, I, I I gotta try. I gotta try. I gotta try. I know. I know. I know. But no, I don't want to. I, I want people to watch the show. It's a story. Let it play out, and let's see what happens. And you're gonna have to wait till season two to find out. Are you? <laughs> have, have you finished work on season? Or can you, like, where are you right now with uh, season two production? I have recorded my lines for season two. <laughs> I've done them. And um, I will be brought back to do pickups and you know some line changes or some just different whatever when they once they get the animation done. But it's the animation that takes a long time. So they usually start with our voices first. It's called prelay. We do the voices first, then they animate. They do the the animation to it, and then we come back in for cleanups and things like that. And because uh, I know we, I know season three is also already in the works. Have you, have they start, again? I know you can't spoil, but like, have you started getting the script set for season three or are you waiting no. patiently? Okay. Okay. They're working on, they've, they've just begun working on season three. So I'm looking forward to that one as well. Yeah. Well, I wanted to, I wanted to pick your X Men uh, brain a little bit as so because I you know you you know you played Rogue longer than anyone you know like I mean you are Rogue to the, to you know to the whole world and I've always been curious to hear from you since we know that Marvel you know they're getting ready to now bring back the X Men to the big screen in live action and you know so you know if whoever take you know takes on the ro- ro- role of Rogue what is what is what is an advice that you would give to that actress who takes takes her on you know and like you know it's someone who's played for her for so long now. Well, whoever gets chosen, I'd love to meet with them and and have a coffee and we could chat about Rogue and what, you know, what what makes her tick, 
what she what are her foibles what's her achilles heels her, her achilles heel um i think every actor brings their own uh, talents and passions and experience to each role so i wouldn't i wouldn't want to tell them what to do but i would want to have a conversation with them if that's possible and discuss it and and brainstorm and i think that would be a lot of fun something I, something i was even talking to some of my friends the other day because i said you know i'm interview, i'm interviewing my first x-men tomorrow uh, yeah. and i you know we were talking about like we love those moments where we get to see like actors kind of like meet each other on the screen and kind of like right. you know pass a, pass a baton or kind of like acknowledging hey you know i'm yeah. you or whatever so on if kevin feige could give you a call tomorrow and said you know because you know the movie is in the works you know would would you want to show up in a cameo, you know, whatever it would yeah, be? Sure, I'd love to. I mean, I've always said I'd love to play Rogue's mother, like her original mother. Because when you look at the 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 cartoon uh, comics, the drawings of her, she looks a lot like me, actually. She looks like a 70s um, hippie you know, <laughs> mother with long blonde hair and you know, like golden skin and green hazel eyes, you know. Uh, so I was thinking, wow, that that would be really fun. But who knows where they're going to go with the scripts. But that would be a blast. Well, I mean, we know Kevin Feige. He's, I mean, he, I mean, he's so nerdy for X-Men Animator Series. I mean, I mean, how many times have we now heard the theme song throughout the MCU? Like, we keep hearing it. I'm like, okay, like, it would not shock me at all if, like, by the time they start filming, they're like, hey, you know, like, let's bring some of y'all in for some fun cameras and so on. It's, I think it would be... It would be a blast. And, you know, I just met uh, Ron Wasserman, who's the original uh, composer of the score of that of that song, of the uh, iconic X-Men theme. And it was so nice to be able to finally meet him and thank him for, you know, creating that beautiful music that now is a, an earworm for so many people. <laughs> and it's interesting, you know, um, our fans from the 90s, of course, most of them are now in their 40s and they have children of their own, many of them, who they are now turning on to our show. So at Comic Cons, I'm meeting fans now, new fans who have just watched X-Men 97, who now are watching the original show because of X-Men 97. But I'm seeing fans who are six and seven years old who are telling me it's their favorite show of all time <laughs> and, you know, that they love Rogue. And I say, look, aren't you scared? And they're like, no, it's exciting. And I've watched episode five six times, said one little six-year-old girl the other day. <laughs> It's so it's so it's so heartwarming, you know. So you have the little, the young children, you have teenagers, you got the parents, and sometimes grandparents as well who are big fans of the show. So it's a whole new world, and I'm just so thrilled that there's so many more X Men fans out there. I, I look at us like a community, like a family, where people know that we all belong. It's okay to be who you are. If you're different. Great. Isn't that a wonderful thing? Like, let's celebrate it as opposed to trying to other people make them feel bad because they love who they love or the color of their skin or whatever. Um, no room for bigotry in X-Men in our community and in our world. So I'm just really grateful to be back. Amen to that. I am. Uh... Could, I could not agree more. And before I let you go, what, besides X-Men 97, where can fans look forward to, to hearing or see you next? Okay, well, I have a movie that's coming out called, in September probably, called The Legend of the White Dragon. And it's the last movie, sadly, that Jason David Frank did, who was the Green Power Ranger. And so it's his final movie, and I'm, I'm in that. Also, I have a book. I have my my memoir coming out in September uh, called A Rogue's Tale. So keep an eye out for that. <laughs> It'll be available on Amazon and, and stuff like that. Um, and then I did another movie that's an animated feature film for children called Space Bears, which will be coming out in 2025. And that's about these little bears from outer space who whose mission is to go to dying planets and try and save them and try to in, tell the inhabitants to protect and preserve the environment. So that's a lot of fun. And I, I got to sing in that one, too. It's a musical. So. Awesome. Awesome. And I, I, know, I know I read that you were that you're uh, a singer as well. So yeah, you, you, yeah. You're, you're a woman of many talents. 
Thank you. Well, I started off doing musicals. That's how I started. I, I sang in musicals and in bands. Then I found out I, I could act. So then I was acting and I was doing theater. Then I did film and television and finally animation. Listen, I mean, I'm just putting this out there, but X Men the musical, maybe? I know, right? I, that would not be, or even See, an episode. Yeah, like see, like I mean, heck, all these TV shows are doing musical episodes these days. Like, what? Well, yeah, I, I would, I would love to see, like maybe, like in season three, you know, you all get together, sing your feelings out, you know, because <laughs> you know, you all these X Men have gone through stuff. <laughs> I know, I know, and we, and we can, yeah, you know, and also people want to follow me. I'm on Instagram at Lenore Zan, L E N O R E Z Z A N N at Lenore Zan or Twitter at Zan Lenore. And uh, yeah, follow me. I oftentimes talk to the fans and interact. So I'm, I'm always happy to have a chat with people. Well, Lenore, thank you so much for your time. And thank you for everything that you have done as part of this X-Men legacy. You know, again, I grew up on the show. Like, you know, I'm in my 30s now, you know, and I was just a little, you know, a little- must have been tiny, yeah. Very tiny. <laughs> Six or seven or something six, yourself. Six, six, seven, yeah, and like, yeah, and like, if you had asked me thirty years ago, yeah, you will talk to Ro when you grow up. I'm like, you're right. crazy. I so, know. but uh, but thank you so much. Congratulations on what was an amazing first thank season. You. I cannot wait to see where Ro goes next, and so hope we will chat in the future soon. This uniform shows up in Mexico bashing heads in with you. It sends a message. Damn right that you stand with mutants. <laughs>